we get one person for it. All right, well, uh, I'm calling this uh, Things from My Dad's Place. Number one, the ring you were wearing. A gold rimmed eye of black onyx with a diamond pupil, a stone from your mother's wedding ring. Von Shiverly come to fix my hoot, is what I hear every time I think about your mom, followed by your dad playing Who Stole My Kitty on the ukulele, the floor of the lake cabin creaking in time, then the dock that half sunk after your dad sat up in the middle of the night saying, this is it. Then you, red jacket, a divorce beard, jeans that look lost, and your mother's hand poking out of a stiff white sheet, both of you singing, tears in your eyes, wonder in hers. And finally, this part of the poem you wrote. I know you well. Some of myself is in you, the part that sings songs. Two, the watch you wore, still the loudest thing in the room. Three, your hair. I never touched it, not really, maybe by accident. It's baby feathers the way new things in nature open up. Four, the people from the morgue, the way they were all business getting you out the door like you were late for the next life, the way you mocked them by saluting me as you passed, the way I tried to be brave and salute you back. Five, the gun you slept with. Who sleeps with a loaded gun under the covers? First chamber's empty, you say. First click is the only warning they get. Six, your girlfriend. Everyone but me thinks she killed you. She gave me the necklace you gave her. Slip it in the casket when you get a chance, she said. So I gave it to Sarah, the one who started the whole girlfriend killing you theory, and I'm sure she just threw it away. I was mad at first, but why did I give it to her of all people? Seven, your golf clubs. I brought them to the Muni the next day, hoping to find you there. They said I was crazy for thinking I could walk on without a tea time, let alone golf by myself. So I just stood there, looking like a guy who hadn't hit a ball in 20 years. And for some reason, I still don't understand they let me play off the back nine. Here's what I learned. If you stand in the middle of the 11th fairway and look at the sun through the canopy of an ash tree, the wind and the leaves flicker, or filtering the light down to a golden syrup by the time it reaches your face, you can feel you, the flannel soft of your belly, the sparkle of your gold cap smile, your bare kiss stubble, mischief, a soft shoe, a pinch on my kneecap. Eight, the book I mailed you anonymously, the skeptical number of pages you've read, the story of a neuroscientist who witnessed her own stroke and found what I thought you so badly needed, a faith in something beyond herself, we are energy beings connected to one another as one family through the consciousness of our brain's right hemispheres. And in this moment, we are perfect, we are whole, and we are beautiful. Except that, like everything I wanted for you, it was only something I wanted for me. Nine, a photo. You deep sea fishing. You're wearing a thick denim jacket lined with sheepskin. The collar's up, snug against your neck. Your rod is bowed, you're pulling something up from deep down. Behind you, behind the edge of that little boat, water is spreading, getting wider and wider until it meets the white of the sky. So there's no horizon, no difference between the sea and what's beyond it. 10, the note on the table next to your chair. B day, dancing. How I've been thinking about framing it, your last poem and how I wish we had just once danced together. And then how I've come to see all the unanswered invitations to dance over the years, to visit the giant turtles, to swim where you swam with the hammerheads, to fish for prehistoric trout, to watch the game, a bucket of balls, a movie in the community room, the bank, a cheese board at Goo Bonks, just one martini and a date for a cookie. 11, your chair. You sat there all winter calling me. Jeez, you have to see this. This guy's going after a river monster the size of an ox. 
I didn't know it, but what you were really saying was that there are things out there, things teetering between terror and wonder, you know nothing about.